My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, we'll continue this week and reflecting where we started last week on Surah Al-Hujarat. And in last week's khutbah, we mentioned several principles from not putting ourselves in front of Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, a not putting ourselves in front of the Quran and the Sunnah and implementing the Quran and Sunnah in our lives as Muslims and the importance of not accepting rumors until we investigate and make sure that the news that we hear is correct and authentic and the impact and the effect that the Iman has on the heart of the believer and that which he loves and that which he dislikes and the blessing, the ni'mah of Islam and Islam is the greatest favor and greatest blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then the importance of brotherhood and reconciling between our brothers and solving differences that they have when they fall into differences and then how we can obtain the rahmah, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we said last week that all seven of these principles that we mentioned, it's as if they are muqaddimat, like introductions coming for the social issues that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to discuss and mention to us in the upcoming verses. Because if we have these things, where the most important thing to us, our outlook on life, is based on the Qur'an and Sunnah. We have the love for our brothers. And we strive to fix any differences we have with our brothers. And we strive to obtain the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we have the love for Allah and for His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and for our religion, al-Islam, in our hearts. It's going to become easy for us then to implement these different rulings and social obligations that we're going to talk about today. And the first of those comes in verse 11 when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls us in the name of Iman, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, la yaskhar qawmun min qawm. O oh, you who have believed, do not let a group of people ridicule another group of people. Don't ridicule, don't look down upon, don't make fun of another group of people. Why is that? Allah said, That perhaps that they are better than them. That same person that you're looking down upon, that person that you're ridiculing, making fun of, perhaps he's actually better than you. Perhaps he has something. And wallahi ya akhwan, my brothers and sisters, I've seen this with my own eyes. Individuals in our society, we look at them as not being from the Salihin, not being pious, not being good Muslims. They have shortcomings. But when you know some of the things that they have behind closed doors, from Birr al Wadideen, the duty, being dutiful and good to their parents, helping out the poor, helping out the needy, helping out the widows, helping out the orphans, supporting da'wah, supporting projects around the world. And we don't know this. We look at them as being less than us. We look at them as we're better than them. In reality, in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they're better than us. So never ridicule, never look down on a people. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after that, He said, وَلَا nisa min nisa," And don't let a group of women ridicule another group of women. Don't let them look down upon them. Don't let them talk bad about, about them. Why, once again, عَسَىٰ يَكُنَّ خَيْرًا مِنْهُنْ That perhaps they are better than them. And here the question comes, why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after mentioning the qawm, the group of people, which includes both male and female, why did he mention women after this, in this ayah? And this is because from the nature of women is that they tend to gossip more. They tend to look into things and talk about their sisters more. And you'll find this, oh my God, did you see her makeup? Did you see the blouse she was wearing? It didn't match with her skirt. Did you see her nails? Well, you don't see that type of stuff with the brothers. If a brother came to you and said, did you see the shirt that he was wearing? Did you see his hair? You'd be like, no, I didn't. <laughs> and then if he was saying this, you'd be like, bro, I think you have some issues. You need to check out yourself before you check on other people. 
Because it's not something in the nature of men. Whereas the women, they tend to do this. So Allah made the emphasis on it, pay attention. Because as they gather in their groups, and the sisters know this well, that shaitan, when he comes to them, and they tend to fall into this trap. So be extra careful, sisters. Allah sent you an extra warning. Not to fall into that gossip and looking down or talking negatively about your sisters. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues. وَلَا تَلْمِزُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ وَلَا تَنَابَزُوا بِالْأَلْقَابِ do not slander one another and do not mention each other by negative nicknames. Negative names or nicknames that that individual doesn't like. Don't mention these things. Stay away from it. Refrain it. Refrain from it. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions to us why. Or one of the reasons why, not just the fact that they're better than us, they could be better than us, but also, بِتْسَ الْإِسْمُ الْفُسُوقُ بَعْدَ الْإِيمَانِ how horrible is it to mention your brother in a negative name, to talk negatively about your brother after you have iman in your heart? It contradicts the essence of iman. Once iman has entered your heart, and once you have in your heart what we talked about last week, then it's not suitable for you as a believer to look down upon anyone else. It's not suitable for you to slander anyone else. It's not suitable for you to make fun of other people. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, لَيْسَ الْمُؤْمِنْ لَيْسَ الْمُؤْمِنْ بِالطَّعَانِ وَلَا الْلَعَانِ وَلَا الْفَاحِشِ وَلَا الْبَذِي He said that the believer is not someone who is a ta'an, who slanders. And he's not someone who is la'an, who curses others. He's not someone who is fahish, who is immoral. And he's not someone who is badi, someone who is obscene. All these characteristics, the true believer is free from them. He makes sure that he doesn't have these characteristics and how he looks at others and how he treats others. And then in the next verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions to us three of the destroyers, three of the characteristics that come and they destroy friendship. They destroy brotherhood. They separate families. They destroy households and in marriages. They corrupt the communities and societies and even the ummah. And they are negative suspicions of others. And spying on one another. And ghibah, backbiting. Once again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls us in the name of Iman. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu. Oh, you have believed. Stay away from the negative suspicions. Verily, some of suspicion is sinful. And do not spy on one another and do not backbite one another. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us to stay away from the dhan, having negative suspicions about our brothers and sisters. And then says, inna ba'da dhan ithim, that indeed some of these suspicions are sinful. Why is it that some of them are, are sinful and some of them are? What does this mean? First of all, the negative suspicions that we need to stay away from this is when it comes to first of all and foremost, first and foremost, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and about our religion. Because when you have true iman, you don't have any negative thoughts about Allah or His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about our religion. And also when it comes to those who are the pious people and those who are the thiqat, the trustworthy ones, we don't have negative suspicion. This is what this verse means. If someone is known to be someone who's pious, he's upright, he's trustworthy, and then we see something negative from him, this is when it becomes haram to have negative suspicions. And we automatically, right away, have to think positive about this brother or sister because we know them for the good that they have. However, if someone is known to be from the fusaq, from those who are the disobedient, they're falling into haram night and day, openly sinning in front of people, and then we see them falling into something negative, it's not compulsory upon us to have good thoughts about them because they brought it upon themselves. This is what they're known for. So if that's what we thought they were doing 
at that time of the night in this certain place, then most likely that's what they were doing. But then again, just because we don't have to have good thoughts about them, also we don't go in exposing our brothers and sisters. If we find our brothers and sisters have fallen into sin, they fall into shortcoming, we try our best to cover up for them. But we don't have to have good thoughts if they have put themselves in the place of suspicion and they themselves are disobedient. This is the meaning of the verse. When it comes to negative suspicions, the Prophet Wasallam. He told us in the hadith to stay away from the negative suspicions. To stay away from the negative suspicions, he said that it's akdab al hadith. It's the most false of speech. The dhun, the negative dhun. And another hadith, which the scholars said, the narration of the hadith, some of them said it's actually not authentic, but its meaning is authentic, which is husn al dhun is from ibadah to have good thoughts about your brothers it's actually a form of worship so even if the narration of the hadith is not correct its meaning is correct because if it's sinful to fall into negative suspicion then it's a reward to have good thoughts about your brother always look for the bro- for, for the for the uda, for the excuse for your brothers and sisters especially when they're trustworthy and stay away from spying when it comes to spying What's meant by the ayah is looking for the faults and the shortcomings of your brother, trying to expose them. <coughs> People ask about espionage and spy, as the governments do. Is this permissible? This is another ruling altogether. When it comes to the protection of the state or the country you live in, this is something that any intelligent forces, they have to do. And as long as they do it in a halal fashion, not harming others or not invading their privacy, then inshallah there's nothing wrong with that. But that's the job of the government. It's not our job to be 007s of the neighborhood and to spy, to expose the uh, mistakes and shortcomings of our brothers and sisters. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he told us in the hadith, and pay attention to this hadith. He said, Alayhi Salatu Wasallam, لا تقتاب المسلمين ولا تتبع وراتهم. He said, do not backbite the Muslims and do not search for their faults. Then he said, alayhi salatu was salam, فَإِنَّهُ مَنْ تَبِعَ أَوْرَاتِهِمْ اِتَّبَعَ اللَّهُ أَوْرَاتَهُ وَفَضَحُهُ فِي بَيْتِهِ وَمَنْ اِتَّبَعَ اللَّهُ أَوْرَاتَهُ يَفْضَحُهُ فِي بَيْتِهِ He said in the hadith after that, he said, and whoever follows the shortcomings or faults, whoever follows the, the faults of his brother, that Allah will follow his faults. And whoever Allah follows his faults, he would expose him even in his own house. So when you look to expose the faults of others, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who hid your faults is going to expose you in front of the people. So beware. Do not spy on your brothers and sisters. And do not backbite one another. What does it mean backbiting? Ghiba. Subhanallah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked, what does it mean ghiba? He said, alayhi salatu was salam, dhikruka akhaq bima yakra. To mention about your brother that which he dislikes. To mention about your brother that which he dislikes. A characteristic that perhaps he has maybe. Subhanallah, the Sahabi asked the Prophet right away. He said, what about if my brother has that characteristic that I'm saying about him? I mean, it's true. It's something he dislikes, it's something negative, but it's true. The Prophet ﷺ said, if he has it, he has this characteristic, فَقَدْ أَقْتَبْتَ That if he has it, then verily you have made backbiting upon him. But if he doesn't have it, قَدْ بَهَتَّ That you have slandered him. You took it to even a higher level, because now you're saying a lie, and you're talking negatively about him. This is the meaning of backbiting. And the severity of the ghibah that sometimes we don't pay attention to. In fact, subhanAllah, something amazing that Imam al-Dhahabi mentioned. He said that the Muslims, when it comes to eating that which is halal, making sure they wear that which is halal, he said, you'll find that they're very keen to that. Like we have, those who have ever been to the West, the Muslims, when it comes to halal meat, and the, the biha, this is just the top priority. They'll go to the nightclub, they might drink, 
They might date, but they have to have halal meat. Allahu Akbar. And Imam al Dhahabi is mentioning here, what, over 700 years ago, he's saying the same thing was similar that the Muslim, when it comes to eating halal, making sure he's wearing that which is halal, he's very keen on that. But when it comes to backbiting his brothers and sisters, like it's no big deal. And the hadith of Aisha radiallahu anha, when she said something negative about her co-wife, Sophia radiallahu anha, and that's something that happens between co-wives. She mentioned her as being short, that she was short in her stature. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam became angry. He said, you said a karima, you uttered a word. If you were to mix that word, that she's short. Something we look at, no big deal today. I called call her short. I called him, oh, the fat brother. Huh? Huh? The heavyweight sister. Huh? And like it's no big deal. We use these type of things. She said, oh, the, the short one. He said, you have uttered a word that if it was to be mixed with the water of the sea, that it would pollute it. It would pollute the entire sea from how severe this word is. And that's why Allah said it towards the end of the verse. And a question and an example. Would one of you like to eat the flesh of his brother when he's dead? Ask yourself this question. Your brother passed away. Would you like to go and have some steaks? Bite into his flesh? You say, of course not. That's why Allah said, فَكَرِهْتُمُوا That you dislike this, you despise it, you reject it. You would never accept this. So the same thing, just like you wouldn't accept doing that to his flesh when he's dead. Then don't backbite him when he's alive. This is the right of your Muslim brother and sister upon you that you never talk negatively about them. The way of the believer as the Prophet ﷺ told us, مَنْ كَانَ يُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ That whoever believes in Allah on the last day, فَلْيَقُلْ خَيْرًا أَوْ لِيَسْمُوتِ Then let him say good or remain quiet. Look at all your own faults. None of us is perfect. All of us know our own faults. Who are you to talk about someone else? And here the question comes, some woman asks, I fell into these negative characteristics. What can I do? How can I escape? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then made it clear in the verse at the end. وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهُ And fear Allah. إِنَّ اللَّهَ تَوَّابُ الرَّحِيمُ That indeed Allah is the one who accepts the tawbah, the one who accepts the repentance from them, and He is the all-merciful subhanahu wa ta'ala. بَارَكَ اللَّهُ لِي وَلَكُمْ فِي الْقُرْآنِ وَالسُنَّةِ وَنَفْعَنُ وَيَاكُمْ بِمَا فِيهِمَا مِنِ الْآيَاتِ وَالْحِكْمَةِ أَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَاسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ لِي وَلَكُمْ فَاسْتَغْفِرُوهُ إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ in the next verse, my dear brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows us one of the hikmas, one of the wisdoms behind us being created from different tribes and different nations, different backgrounds, different cultures. And He calls us and calls all of mankind this ayah. Not, Ya ayyuladin amanu, but Ya ayyuhannas. O mankind, the Muslim, the non Muslim, all of you pay attention to this ayah. إِنَّا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ مِنْ ذَكِرٍ وَأُنْثَى وَجَعَلْنَاكُمْ شُعُوبًا وَقَبَائِلًا لِتَعَارَفُوا That we have created you from male and female and we have made you different nations, different tribes so that you can know one another. You can benefit from one another. SubhanAllah, living in a multi multicultural society like we live in here, one of the benefits is that you can take from what others have to offer. You can benefit from different things. Any place you travel to in the world, you'll find something beneficial that you didn't know from your culture. And as it came in one hadith, even though it's not authentic in the narration as the scholars mentioned, but once again, the meaning is correct. And that is that the hikmah, ضالتُ mu'min. That the hikmah, the wisdom is the lost belonging of the believer. Wherever he finds it, he takes it. When we want to find, we want to benefit in our lives. We found something beneficial from a different custom, from a different culture. It doesn't go against our religion. It's in accordance with our religion. I'm going to take it. I'm going to benefit from it. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed us who is the most noble from us. Who is the best of all of mankind. إِنَّ أَكْرَمَكُمْ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ 
atqaqum that indeed the best of you indeed the best of you in the sights of in the sight of Allah is the most noble the one who has the most taqwa the most piety is the one who is the most noble it's not about your nationality it's not about the passport that you hold how many countries you can enter without a visa huh it's not about how much money you have your status in society it's about your taqwa inna akramakum indallahi atqaakum the one who has the most taqwa the most piety the most fear of allah the one who acts upon and his actions are based upon the reality that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is seeing what he is doing. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to hold him accountable for his actions. This is the most noble of, of people. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his final hajj, he told his companions that there's no fadl, there's no virtue to an Arabi, to the Arab upon the Ajami. The Arab has no virtue upon the foreigner or the foreigner has no virtue upon the Arabi or the red skin or brown skin against the black skin or the black skin against the brown skin except for with taqwa illa bi taqwa this is the teachings of islam 1400 years ago look at the history of the west who claims to come now with democracy and equality and all of this where if you're in america and you're black you get shot down still till today huh? they talk about the equality they talk about being fair even though they might be better honestly than some muslim countries unfortunately but the Muslim countries, when they went away from the teachings of Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala humiliated them like we see today. But when they implemented these teachings, the teachings of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who you saw who his advisors and those close to him, yes, he had from Quraysh, from the noble tribes of his area. He had Abu Bakr, he had Umar, he had Ali radiallahu anhum. But at the same time, those close to him, Silman al-Farisi, the Persian. Huh? Suhaib al-Rumi, the Roman Suhaib, Bilal, the Habashi, the former slave who was free. When you look how they would marry and who they would marry, Fatima bin Qais, who did the Prophet sallallahu marry her to? To Usama ibn Zayd, who was a freed slave. Abdurrahman ibn Auf, and his sister is from the noble Quraysh. And he married her to Bilal radiallahu anhu. And this is how the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam continue to establish the justice and to establish this principle of inna akramakum indallahi atqaqum that indeed the most noble to you, the most noble from you is the one who has the taqwa. Umar ibn Khattab, during his time, there was a man by the name of Jabala and he was one of the leaders, one of the rulers of the tribe of Ghassan. And he came for Hajj for Umrah. And as he was making the tawaf, there was a Bedouin who stepped on his izar. And he looked at this as being disrespectful because I'm Jabala from Ghassan. I'm a king. I'm a leader. And you are a Bedouin coming from the desert. And you stepped on my izar. He turned around and he slapped him so hard that he broke his nose. Immediately this Badawi, this Arabi, he ran to the Prophet, he ran to Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu an to show him, to show him what had happened to him. I made a mistake, I didn't mean to do it. I stepped on the man's izar. Probably said, you know, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do it. But the guy turns around, smacks him in the face and breaks his nose. Immediately, Umar ibn Khattab had that man come in front of him. And he said, I heard you did this, ya Jabala. He didn't hide it. He said, yes, I did. Basically saying, so what? What's the big deal? Huh? He said, and this Arabi, this Bedouin, he was actually lucky. If it wasn't for the sacred house, for the Kaaba being here, he said, I would have killed him because he stepped on my Izzah. I wouldn't have just broke his nose. I would have killed him. He's lucky that we were next to this, in this sacred place. Umar radiallahu an, he said that if he doesn't forgive you, then you will be punished. The qisas, you're going to get your due. It doesn't matter who you are. He said, but I'm a king and he's a peasant. He's from the normal people. And I'm from the Umarah. I'm from the princes. From the, I'm a king, he said. How can you treat me equal to him? He said, Islam came and made you both equal. Allahu Akbar. Islam came and made you both equal. And he said, but I thought that in Islam, Islam would have even given me a higher status than Jahiliyyah. 
He said, leave that stuff. Umar radiallahu he said, leave it. He said, if he doesn't forgive you, you're going to be punished. He said, then I'll become Christian. He said, become Christian and I'll kill you. Umar radiallahu anh, implementing, huh? it's your choice. You're either going to get punished or you're going to get put to death. So what did the guy do? Out of, out of this kibr, this pride he had in his heart, he ran away. He, he, he fled. And then later he became Christian, lost his deen and lost his dunya. A'udhu billah. Another time, an Egyptian man, a Christian, who didn't enter into Islam when the Muslims came and conquered Egypt and they were left, alhamdulillah, free to practice their religion. He raced one of the sons of Amr ibn al-As and he beat him in the race. And he felt disgraced, the son of Amr. So he took a whip and he started to beat this non-Muslim man. He ran and took refuge with Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. He said, Ya Umar, he said, this man, the son of Amr, we raced and I beat him and he came with a whip and started to beat me. He said, I seek refuge with you from this man. He told me that he's Ibn al-Akrameen. He said, I'm from the sons of the noble. The pride once again. I'm from the sons of the noble. Umar ibn al-Khattab sent to Amr. He said, come to me and bring your son so-and-so with you. When they arrived, he said, Ayn al-Misri, where's the Egyptian man? Bring him. He brought him in front of them, gave him a whip, and he said, beat him. Whip him, lash him just like he did to you. And he said, whip Ibn al akramin He said, whip the son of the nobles. This is Islam. And this is the teachings of Islam. And when we implement these teachings, we see how justice is established upon earth. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, there's some more things we need to reflect on in this surah. But the time that we have has come to an end. I want each of you today to go home and to reflect on this surah. Two and a half pages. Reflect on it in Arabic. Reflect on it in your language. Look at the lessons that we talked about from last week. And look at the lessons that are mentioned that we talked about today. And even some of the, mess- the lessons that we didn't have time to talk about. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ That it, the believers are only those who have certain characteristics. What are the characteristics that they have? Their belief. Their belief in Allah and His Messenger. And not having the riba, not having doubts, and those who strive and spin in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with themselves and with their money. And look how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows the favor of Islam. That we do no favor to Allah when we enter Islam, and Allah is the one who has blessed us with the favor of Islam. And then focus and reflect. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala finished this surah, the last ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Inna Allah ya'lamu ghayb as-samawati wal That Allah knows, indeed Allah knows the unseen of the heavens and earth. Wallahu basirun bima ta'malun. And Allah, He is all-seeing to that which you do. What is the hikmah? What is the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ending this surah with this ayah? For us to reflect on the teachings that have been mentioned in this, uh, in, in, this, in, this, in this surah to remind ourselves to implement. That Allah knows everything. Allah knows what's in our hearts and how we look at others. Allah knows how we treat others. Allah knows what we say when we talk about others and how we deal with others. All of this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is well acquainted. And that's why he said in one of the other verses that Allah is khabir. Allah is alimun khabir. Allah is well, I meaning He knows well. He knows, has all of the knowledge of that which you do in your actions. And He's khabir. He's well acquainted with that which is in your heart and how you're dealing with others, how you look at others. This is a very beautiful, a very powerful surah, even though we said it's only two and a half pages. Let's reflect, my dear brothers and sisters, on this surah and reflect on the Quran and revive the Quran in our lives. Not just a book of Ajr and Barakah that we read, but a book we read for guidance. Hudan lil muttaqeen, Allah describes this, the, the kitab. The book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is guidance for those who have taqwa. We need to search for these characteristics that Allah is mentioning in these ayat to implement them in our lives, in ourselves first of all, and then in our others. To make these principles, qawaid, in our lives, in the lives of our children. When we hear our children, Talk negatively about someone else. We go back to the teachings. 
So you don't remember what we studied in Surah Al-Hujarat? Huh? Do one of you like to eat the laham, the flesh of his brother when he's dead? What did Allah say about backbiting? When he's looking for the mistakes of others, what did Allah say about spying on others? What did Allah say about having any negative thoughts? We say, look at that peasant, the skin, he's cleaning the street. That could have been you, bro. Don't make fun of someone else. He's out there supporting his family. He might be better. He might, be, he might have Qiyam al-Layl. You don't have it. Don't look down upon anybody. Remember what Allah said in Surah Al-Hujarat. لا يسخر قوم من قوم. We make these principles in our lives, in the lives of our children. ثم اعلموا رحم الله وإياكم أن الله قد أمركم بأمر بدأ بي بنفسه ثم ثن بملائكة الكرام فقال عز وجل إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي